Hi guys and welcome to Tutes Online. Today I'm going to take you through the rectum and the anal canal. Let's start with the rectum first. This is a retroperitoneal structure. It lies between sacral vertebra 3 and the pelvic diaphragm. It has no sacculations or historia. Therefore, no tenia coli and also no epiploic or omental appendices. For the upper third, the anterior and sides are covered with peritoneum. The middle third, only the anterior is covered with peritoneum. The lower third has no peritoneum. It is anterior to the sacrum, the coccyx, and the pelvic diaphragm. It is lateral to the sigmoid colon, the ilium, and the pelvic diaphragm. And it is posterior to something called the retro vesicular pouch in males, which is a pouch created by the reflection of peritoneum covering the middle third of the rectum. In males, it's also posterior to the base of the bladder. Ductus deferens. Prostate. Seminal vesicles. In females, it is posterior to the retrouterine pouch. Also known as the pouch of Douglas. As well as the uterus and vagina. Here we have a picture of the rectum. Below this line is the anal canal. And here we have the end of the sigmoid colon. So everything between these two dotted lines is the rectum. The rectum has two sets of curvatures, an anterior and a posterior curvature, and lateral curvatures. The anterior posterior curvatures follow the curvature of the sacrum. So as we know, our sacrum curves like this when viewed from side on. So you have an anterior posterior anterior curve of the rectum. Here we've cut through the lumen of the rectum 
So we can see the posterior wall and we can see the lateral curvatures. The first one curves to the right, the second one curves to the left, and the last one curves to the right. So here is right and here is left. You can see it's going right and then left and then right. There are temporary folds in a region called the ampulla and these are longitudinal folds. These exist for the expansion of the ampulla as this is the region where feces is stored before it's expelled from the body. It has permanent transverse folds and these are here, here and here. And it is thought that perhaps these folds cause the rectal flexures. Here we have the peritoneum and we can see it folding away to form the retrovesicular or retrouterine pouch. We can see the inner circular and outer longitudinal. muscle which surround all of the tubes in the digestive system. Okay, here I've drawn a sagittal section of a male. We can see the sacrum here and the rectum here. This is where the retrovesicular pouch is located in this space down here. And we can see that the bladder and the prostate and the seminal vesicles are all anterior to the rectum and the sacrum is posterior to the rectum. Here I've drawn a sagittal section of a female and where the dotted line is outlines two pouches. Here is a pouch we talked about known as the recto-uterine pouch, also known as the pouch of Douglas. There's a second pouch between the bladder and the uterus and this is known as the uterovesicular pouch. And here again revealed we have the rectum which is anterior to the sacrum but posterior to the uterus and the bladder. Now we'll move on to the anal canal. This is surrounded by a sling of skeletal muscle. At the junction between the rectum and the anus, called the recto-anal junction. And this muscle is called puborectalis. The anal canal commences with the pelvic diaphragm and ends at the anus. The anal canal is anterior. The anal canal is anterior to the anocoxygeal ligament which, as the name suggests, connects the coccyx
to the anal canal. It is posterior to the perineal body and membranous urethra or bulb of the penis in males. or the vagina in females. How does the waist or the feces move out of the anal canal? This is a process called defecation. and it's triggered by rectal stretching. So the feces is held in the rectal ampulla and this applies pressure to the walls and this sends a message to the medulla of the brain which in turn sends a message to the sphincters and puborectalis to relax. This causes an increase in peristalsis and then we get the gastrocolic reflex occurring. This gives us the message that we need to do something and we use contraction of the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm to increase abdominal pressure And everything from the splenic flexure down gets voided. So again, we have the contents of the rectal ampulla pushing on the walls. It sends a message to the medulla. The medulla sends a message to the sphincters and puborectalis to relax. This increases peristalsis. You get the gastrocolic reflex occurring. We say, hey, we need to do something about this. Um, and we use contraction of the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm to increase abdominal pressure. And everything from the splenic flexure down gets voided. So let's take a look at the anal canal. We've cut through the lumen so we can reveal its structure. We can see these vertical folds. These are called anal columns and they mark the junction between the rectum and the anus, so the rectal anal junction. Down here at the lower end of the columns, there are some transverse folds. And these are called valves. And this line of valves is known as the pectinate line. Between the columns are some spaces, and these spaces are known as anal sinuses. The anus has two sphincters, the internal and the external sphincter. The internal sphincter surrounds the upper two-thirds, and it's this part here. And this is a thickened layer of external smooth muscle. The external sphincter surrounds the lower two-thirds 
and consists of a deep, superficial, and subcutaneous parts. It is known collectively as sphincter ani. This muscle here is levator ani and is part of the pelvic diaphragm. Finally, we'll just take a look at how puborectalis forms a sling around the anal canal. Up here we have the ampulla of the rectum. Here where it thins and we get this surrounding of puborectalis is the anorectal junction. And here's puborectalis. And this pulls on the upper part of the anal canal and presses on the upper part of the external sphincter. And this helps with continence. And that about wraps it up for the rectum and the anal canal. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Make sure you come and visit the website or subscribe to learn more about the human body. Thanks and I'll see you soon.